Welcome to this special edition of the Beancast, covering the state of premium programmatic buying at the PP360 event in New York. I'm your host, Bob Norm. How is programmatic buying evolving? What's happening with the tools? And where does it go from here? We sat down with a few of the conference attendees at the recent Premium Programmatic 360 conference here in New York to get their opinions. Here's what they had to say. Thanks for being with us once again for this special edition of the Beancast. I'm Bob Norp, and with us on this panel, we have some of the attendees at the Premium Programmatic 360 event. Starting on my left, we have from Condé Nast, uh, General Manager of Catalyst Desk, Alana Gombert. Uh, we also have from Scripps Networks, uh, VP Interactive Sales, Kelly Rourke. And from Kepler Group, we have the VP of Optimization and Innovation, Garrett Dale. Thanks for being with us today, guys. And we got a lot of questions we want to ask you because there's been some interesting discussions going on. And the first question I'm going to throw to Alana, you know, is the marketing community ready for premium programmatic or do you find huge knowledge gaps among marketers about what the advantages are and what's now possible? I mean, what's your sense of the state of the industry right now? Well, I think defining the term programmatic and defining the term premium is important to determine if we are ready or not ready in the market. I think Carl earlier, Carl Calapasi, mentioned that our group at the IAB is attempting to define these terms and bring the market to bear, if you will. So it is ready. But the problem is there's no definitions to kind of bring this up into reality. Well, it's, it's ready. You know, the, the market is ready for something like this, but the marketers out there are not ready to actually embrace it, right? I mean, there's a huge knowledge gap in terms of how to actually implement these programs in, in, um, on an ongoing basis, right? I think a lot of publishers and, and advertisers and agencies are trying to work together to educate each other on the market and the definitions that we've put together at the IAB are helping that conversation but we are doing reserve deals now through programmatic channels and our brands that we work with on the advertising side are using those reserve channels for real buys. Awesome, awesome. Now Kelly, what's your sense of the state of the industry? I mean, um, what can we do to bring about education and optimization within the organizations? How can we educate marketers about what's possible with programmatic buying and, and elevate programmatic buying to a premium state? Perhaps the most fundamental element is to have the conversation. And if you look at a lot of the sellers in media today, um, th- th- they're, they're scared to have the conversation. And yet there's incredible opportunity out there. You've got sellers that aren't sure how to bring it up to a buyer and buyers that are actually finding other resources to access that inventory. So that's probably the, the first thing. Uh, the second thing I would say is... So pretty much what you're saying is there's confusion in the marketplace about what is where to go. Well, there's confusion in, in, in terms of what actually they're buying. Because if you think about something as simple as the word programmatic, it's not so simple at all. In that, <laughs> uh, it can it can either mean real time bidding, right, or it could mean a method of autom- uh, automating the the process. Now, is is that a problem of definition? I mean, are we just need to come up with new definitions? And we have. So <laughs> <laughs> IAB group, <laughs> IAB.net. So, so Kelly is part of it, and Carl mentioned it in his presentation earlier. But we do have definitions now, and it's really focused on is the inventory reserved or not? And if it's not reserved, how are you buying it? Is it open auction? Is it private exchange? Et cetera, et cetera. So I think that document that we put together is a good first step in having the conversation that Kelly mentioned earlier, mm. starting it. That's, re- that's really interesting. I want to bring Garrett into this conversation at this point. Um, are, are you finding that the solutions for premium programmatic are where they need to be, or is there still a ways to go? And you know, there's some interesting th- stuff going on in the ad tech market, but it still needs to develop a little bit more. Or do you find it exactly what you need? No. <laughs> uh, you know, the technology has come a long way for sure. Right. Uh, all the major players have developed their offering. However, at the same time, I, I think you know one of the things that the IAB has done is made it a point to call out transparency on both sides. Mm. Um, and whether that's you know me as a buyer telling the supply side, "Hey, I have this frequency cap. I'm trying to hit this audience." Uh, I'm using these data partners. This is the reason why my you know, bid response ratio is, is so light. 
right? And, and I need you to send this many impressions in order for me to hit the goals. And that's, that's where the, the human element also comes into play as well. So we're not, again, just pressing a button and saying go because, you know, that's, that's not realistic at all. But um, then on my side, I want, I want to know where my impressions are being served. And private marketplace deals through deal IDs are, are great. Um, it gets a little bit cumbersome when you have to set up a ton of different IDs. But then, then again, technology is proving, improving as well where you know, I don't have to do it manually. If I, if I am you know, setting up a homepage deal or a you know, travel vertical deal or you know, a 300 by 600 deal, I, sorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, soon enough I, I will be able to do that in a more uh, streamlined fashion, which I am looking for in order to, again, hit the, uh, the objectives of our advertiser, which I think we always have to keep in mind. It's not just about this, this technology and the improvements in the tech, but it's you know, how that's actually affecting the bottom line impact for the yeah, business. You know, that objectives. brings up another point about programmatic. And when you, when you talk about programmatic in the industry, a lot of people question about taking out the human element of programmatic buying. And somehow we're losing that sense of just common sense and allowing machines to do the buying. Is that even a reasonable argument at this point, guys? No. <laughs> <laughs> I go. talk to Thank Garrett you. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the programmatic technology is a booking mechanism be it the, the exchange or the reserve deals, mm -hmm. the sales process is still a human sales process. We still have conversations, be it over the phone or over email, we're negotiating, we're creating very cool, bespoke, creative units in some cases. <laughs> it is, it's artistry. You're selling something to someone else. A, the use, there's a user in the scenario and there is inventory in the scenario and there is a product you are selling in the scenario. And if you have those things, you need to have a conversation about what to do and how to sell. Uh, and, and really, we're not saying eliminate the, the human element in when we're doing programmatic at all, because there's still the direct buys and there's still those types of relationships where you have to do uh, a more complex type advertising buy, uh, putting together. Um, you know, what is the, what's the right mix for that, Kelly? I mean, where, where do you draw the line and make a, make a balance? Well, to riff off of what Alana said, it's really uh, a combination of art and science. And the way that we look at it is contextual relevance, we believe, is that it's still very important. And if you're a premium publisher, and I might define by that, an incredibly engaged audience. We'll leave it very, very broad right now. You've got a loyal audience coming back, and there's a value to that audience. There, there's, we see um, there's two components to it. The first part is how do you engage that audience? How do you excite the audience um, and bring in new audience? And advertisers have an opportunity to do that through the high engagement, premium advertising that we've developed in our digital properties. And once you get that audience and they engage, th those that engage you can retarget and remessage to. And that's really where you can bring together the, um, the best elements of brand buying with programmatic buying. Now, we were talking just a little bit. You, you said the, a key word here. You talked about premium programmatic and adding premium, premium value to these programmatic buys. Um, how do you do that? How, what, what kind of solutions are you coming up with? And I mean, anybody can jump in on this one. What kind of solutions are you coming up with to add premium value to what has largely been considered to be remnant buying, which is not the way we want it to be? So... For us, we work with different partners and create new types of creative, or we work with their new types of creative, like Google and their Lightbox units, like HTML5 that are cross-screen and responsive and can adapt to each different either handheld device or desktop or what have you. Mm. Those products are helping us push the envelope on the brand side of the equation and actually help the brands get, quote-unquote, reach, which means that they can buy across other premium publishers, but using very bespoke, very impactful units. Mm. I might actually add one other thing to it in Please. a slightly different vein, is this idea of what is, um, you know, you'd referenced uh, what is premium, what is not, and I think there's a perception issue now that programmatic's growing that all inventory uh, sold programmatically via an exchange is not quality or premium inventory. And I think that comes from the roots of where programmatic came from. It was largely uh, used as a method for uh, certain, perhaps non-premium publishers to easily 
uh, sell inventory that was going largely unmonetized. What we're doing as premium publishers is taking the mechanism by which they transacted as a tool and, and using that to monetize our inventory. So the real, I think, uh, issue here is that um, we need to change perceptions and help uh, arm our advertisers in determining what is more good quality and what isn't. Mm. Now, now, Garrett, I'm going to go to you and ask about the conference, because we've been talking very high level about premium programmatic and programmatic buying and all these different issues that the industry is facing. Out of this conference, are you hearing anything that's got you excited, anything that's really kind of charging you up and says, we're, in, we're going in the right direction? Or do you feel like, you know, maybe it left you a little flat? What's going on? Tell us honestly. You know, I'm always going to give it to you, honestly. Alana <laughs> 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 and, and Kelly can attest to that. Um, you know, the the reality is is that um, you know we've actually been doing this for a long time, and, and so nothing here is really a surprise today. But it but it is kind of a, a temperature check, and it's it's validation that that we are continuing to move in the right direction. That's cool. How about the rest of you? Did you hear anything that got you pretty excited or um, just feeling like we're in a good place in the industry and making good progress? I think the conversation that we're having this year is different than last year. Mm. We all know each other and we're all friends. And I think that last year it was more about getting the pipes working, the technology piece working. And I think this year it's about what are we doing with brand and how are we making and helping the brands come into the marketplace in a safe way and in a very creative sexy way that's new so that i think is exciting yeah it's it's interesting you bring that up because that's something that kelly said um she spoke up during one of the sessions and talked about the transparency issue about when we buy stuff we don't even know why deals don't get done what you know we just don't know and are, are we making progress at that transparency kelly i think just uh to echo what Alana said, I think it's great that we're evolving our conversation this year. And I think to add to that, there are more people coming to the table. And that's what's important is that when we get scale and we get more people talking about uh, the need to find ways to be effective, then that creates more standards. And when you create standards, it becomes easier to do the transaction. And so I do think transparency plays into that in, in terms of uh, setting up more consistent ways to make it easy for the advertiser to buy and sell. That's really what it comes down to. Hmm. I'm going to ask one last question of everybody. Everybody can weigh in on this. Um, give me a five-year prediction. Uh, where is the marketplace going? What's the marketplace going to look like in five years? Go, Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I just kind of throw it back at you and, and um, have you define what, what you mean by marketplace exactly? Well, I mean, no, I have not. <laughs> Good question. I mean, uh, essentially what we're talking about is the programmat premium programmatic space, because that's what the conference is about. It's about us trying to add premium value to programmatic buying, et cetera. Where does it go in five years? What does the marketplace look like? What's happening in five years? Five years is a long time in, in the digital space. I mean, think about where we well, were then, five then, years Then ago. compress it. Do, <laughs> what, what, do, does it happen in two years? What, what happens in two years? Um, I mean, I think since the advent of, um, you know, exchanges in general, uh, I guess it took about, about three years probably to get uh, from just you know, really – bare bones kind of exchanges. Where <laughs> you mean the ad well, industry moves slowly? Is that what you're saying <laughs> no, to me? <laughs> I, no, it, it, it's, actually, it's actually fairly quickly compared to other industries, for sure. Um, but, it, but it took a few years to get us into a place where um, even when a lot of the things that were supposed to be automatic were, were still pretty manual. Mm. Um, and then a few years, a few years later, then you started to get into the private marketplaces. I know then, people can't see those, this, but Alana's head <laughs> is shaking off of her neck. But, but, <laughs> but then, then those were still very manual at, at some level. And I think, uh, you know, tools are starting to be built now where we're getting more transparency. So, I mean, things continual, continually, continually, um, uh, continue to uh to move along in the right direction now i still haven't answered your question but <laughs> what, what i'm trying to do here is give a timeline and say that uh in the next in the next year probably just a year i, I wouldn't even go out further than that in the at least in the displaced display marketplace um you know 
we, we won't even be talking about programmatic because uh, that's just the way marketing is. Right, um, right. They, the, na they, the name is almost like a bridge. Yeah. It yes. gets us from point A to point B, but it doesn't really mean anything in the yes. end. Right, okay. And, and I'm, I'm optimistic that we will have all the transparency and all the tools with, within a year. Within yeah, a year, wow. That's, that's incredible. So. How, about the, how about you guys? I mean, Kelly, what, what would you say? Um, one year, two years, five years? What's happening? Well, I'm going to look uh, in Garrett's time frame as well. And I, I like your use of the word optimistic here because I think that's what we, we all are. I, I can make a couple predictions. Um, I, I think that mobile, we will be doing a better job of monetizing mobile because it's, it's relatively new in the <coughs> programmatic space but is such a large component of so many publishers' inventory that it's de facto become a top priority for everyone to find the best way to deliver value. And what that means then is that cross-platform buys become that much more valuable. That's one prediction. I think another prediction is uh, today people talk about the value of first-party data, and there is most definitely a value to first-party data, but I think the expectation with advertisers is that uh, we will be, if they're going to pay a premium for that, we'll be doing more unique things with that data. Mm. Uh, so that might be a, a better curation of that data. It might be offline to online data. So I think those are probably the two components that I think will Now you're talking crazy. Data. You're connecting the offline world to the online world data-wise? I mean, boy, that's like a holy grail. <laughs> it, you know what? I, if, if we could just jump back in. No, please, second, please. It, I, I think she touched on a, a critical point there is that we, we've spoken a lot about workflow today. We've spoken a lot about targeting and audiences, but and even surprisingly a little bit about content and creative, which, which is great. But... There hasn't been a lot of talk about measurement other than a little bit of talk about you know, OCR and, and XCR, which, which are great tools, have limitations like everything else, but they're great tools. And I, I think once, um, once more sophisticated measurement continues to come down the pipeline across channels, beyond even just mobile and, and that, you know, then you know, when you're really tying and closing the loop across all these channels, that's, that's when it's going to be a home run. Well, okay. and one more point on that please, counterpoint please. is that now you're all warming up. Further, <laughs> I think the biggest opportunity we talk about with transparency is that I think there's a fear about sharing data, but in fact, as sellers are sharing, uh, buyers are sharing more information with sellers. We will then, as sellers, mm -hmm. be able to deliver better metrics and reporting mm -hmm. based on that. So I do think this. That's probably the most important point about reporting and transparency in the next year is that we can actually work together on campaigns. Mm. And Alana, do you have anything to add? I do. I think to your point earlier, there are certain terms that are bridge builders right now and show the gaps in the marketplace. One of them is programmatic. One of them is viewability. One of them is native. Mm. I think once we solve for that with new technology across the board, because to me, programmatic is a booking tool. Right. 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 So once we start figuring out how we can book properly, and that means billing, which is the no one ever talks about billing, but it's <laughs> it's, it's one of the biggest barriers to streamlining this this whole technology, billing at the agency level, at the advertiser level, at the publisher level, and also inventory booking, getting wow. all of this new technology into a publisher's legacy inventory system, hasn't happened yet. Once that happens, across the board, across the larger publishers, we will have the next generation of something. Of something. We'll have Elon Musk name it, but we don't know what that is yet. We don't, we don't. Well, we are out of time. I'd like to thank my guests once again, Alana Gomber, um, Kelly Rourke, and Garrett Dell. For more information about the Premium Programmatic 360 Conference, visit pp360nyc.com. And for more information about this show, visit thebeancast.com. On behalf of the PP360 Conference, I'm Bob Norp. Thank you for joining us.